Well, Albertans are likely celebrating Canada's birthday, but with a bit more hesitation. New impaired driving laws came into effect today, and Albertans should think twice about going bottoms up if they want to avoid an indefinite license suspension. For more on this and whether these new laws are inhibiting your civil rights, Paul Duroshenko joins us now. He's a criminal lawyer specializing in driving offenses, and he's live in our Vancouver studio. Hi, Paul. Hi, Anita. All right, so you're originally from Edmonton. What do you make of this new drunk driving legislation? Well, essentially what the provincial government's trying to do is they're trying to um, infringe on sort of the, the, the federal government's responsibility. They're trying to in introduce a bail condition. So if you're charged with uh, any drinking driving offense or refusing to provide a breath sample, uh, driving over 08, uh, sitting in your driver's seat over 08, uh, refusing a roadside breath test, any of those things, you're automatically prohibited from driving until your matter is resolved in court. So it's just like if you were released on bail and you were given a condition that you, you can't drive until your matter is resolved in court. All right. Now, you've argued that the way these uh, breath samples are, are taken are essentially a violation uh, of the Charter of Rights. Can you explain that? Well, I, 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 that's... Uh, a little bit different case in Alberta than it is in BC. Mm -hmm. What's happening in BC is you're you're entitled to be, or in Alberta rather, is you're entitled to be presumed innocent uh, until you're proven guilty in court, and you may not be. You know, 20 percent of the people, or something like that, are are found to ultimately be innocent. But what's happening now is the presumption of innocence is sort of going away. The Alberta government's trying to legislate it out. You're going to be punished right from the beginning. How and dangerous is that? Well, I mean, it's horrible. Think about it. Yeah. If 20% of the people are acquitted ultimately down the road, and the, the, the acquittal rate is probably higher than that, it means 20% of the people are going to be punished uh, right away. But really what this is, from my perspective, is this is the Alberta government uh, trying to bully people into an early guilty plea because they can get the punishment started and get it over sooner. Yeah, so it's so an attempt to sort of get around, uh, to force people to plead guilty, uh, which is really uh, abhorrent in my view. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of folks would agree with you. You know, some say, look, at least they're trying to do something. At least they're trying to uh, uh, get in the way. At least they're trying to stem all these uh, drinking and driving uh, uh, problems. But that doesn't jive with others who say this probably isn't the best way to go uh, or the best direction to take. And I would think that you're one of those folks. Well, I mean, the thing is, we know that the enforcement is the number one thing that stops people from drinking and driving. If people know that they're going to be caught, they won't do it. And education works great. Uh, what this is doing is, is catching people who maybe have never been in trouble before, uh, may be innocent. Lots of people are, you know, lots of people get stopped. We're not just talking about roadblocks. We're talking about, you know, campsites where the police officer's not really sure who was driving, if anybody was driving. You end up with a driving prohibition that starts right then. You're being punished right from the beginning. I mean, it, it, it captures a whole group of people who may be innocent and people who are not necessarily a threat. I mean, there's very few people who, when they're after they're arrested on a drinking driving offense, go and drink and drive during the course of the time that they're waiting for their trial. And remember, a trial can be a year or more down the road. It's not unusual to have uh, to wait for a year. So imagine if you live you know, somewhere in rural Alberta mm -hmm. and you're, you're caught under this. Uh, scheme. There's no transit. There's no nothing. Uh, you lose your job because you can't drive for a living. You may be innocent. Well, you know, you that's lose your a, job. That's you lose your house. Absolutely. And those are some excellent points you made there. I know one of our uh, journalists here at Sun News uh, did a story about this. And what she said, uh, Andrea Slobodian, I believe, uh, what she indicated was, OK, it's interesting that these uh, laws are coming into effect. But the other side of it is there are no uh, there is no infrastructure set in place, really, for people to take advantage of other transit issues uh, uh, when these uh, when this becomes a bit of a tighter issue. What, what are your thoughts on well, that? Well, well, it's more than that. I mean, Alberta industry relies on people being able to drive to job sites yeah. and work sites and oil rigs and rig sites and, and the oil sands. And I mean, this is uh, being in Alberta means that you've got to drive. I mean, it's just a simple fact. So it's going to have a huge impact on a lot of people uh, who are going to be punished right off the top. And this is punishment that Parliament never intended. This is punishment that the provincial government has has imposed. And they've tried to characterize this as some sort of administrative uh, matter, but really, what it comes down to is that they're imposing a bail hearing that you can't revisit in court. They're, you're on bail, okay? You've been uh, accused of committing a criminal offense. You're waiting for your trial date or your court date to come up, and you're put on this condition that the provincial government is imposing, something that they don't really have the power 
uh, if you look at the BNA Act, the, uh, the uh, uh, original legislation that divides the powers for the province and the federal government, they don't really have the power to do this. So they're trying to do an end run around the federal government's responsibility, at the same time violating your presumption of innocence, that you're guaranteed under the Charter of Rights. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a head spinner. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Paul, thank you so much uh, for taking some time out of your day to speak about this very uh, uh, troubling issue, many would say. Thanks for your time. Nice to talk to you. All right. That's Paul Doroshenko, a criminal lawyer, speaking to us from Vancouver. <laughs>